And first of all, I want to thank uh, Al Amen, the best manager in the world. He's the fucking champion of the world! Mickey, man! Madonna Stevenson, piece of shit. No, I think Rosado, good boy. Rosado is a good boy. I've become a massive international superstar, it's as simple as that. I eat your ass all alive, you bitch! Scared of the real man! I'll fuck you till you love me, faggot! I'm going to physically shoot David Hay. He fucking glassed me. He glassed me. Derek, who's out? I'm Shannon Briggs. I'm hard to kill. I'm the black team with the ball. I'm hard to fucking kill. Well, I believe Christopher can take a punch. I'm very good at math and looking at a fighter and seeing what his abilities are. I can't see that Golovkin has anything like Christopher's speed, his power, his punching ability, his hand speed, his foot movement. I don't see that from a calculating point of view. I don't see that he has anything like that. So then it's going to come down to heart. You know, I spoke to Joe Gallagher. They don't want to fight Carl Frampton. And the bottom line is, you know, no disrespect to Cross Branker. These guys aren't good enough to face Carl Frampton. I'm the best heavyweight champion in the world. I'm half WPC with me. I'm undefeated champion. Undisputed champion. I want Moon next. He's got my Dino Ribone cake acid. Undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. next? I love boxing sounds. It's as simple as that. Welcome, gentlemen. It is just 30, it's 42 minutes past midnight and it is... 42 minutes past midnight, sorry, just the feedback off Mixler there. It is the 22nd of February and Kurt Ward has finally managed to get Andy Patterson out of his slumber. We're going to have a slight live podcast, maybe 40, 60 minutes long. Uh, we've just witnessed Granny Golovkin actually get extended past the 10th round. He went in the 11th round stoppage against Mark Murray. Um, as I say, you know, the deepest that Gary Golovkin is a professional is actually ever went into a fight in order to stop his opponent. Uh, three knockdowns, brutalising performance uh, against Martin Murray. Knocked him down three times. You know, I think the first the first knockdown was a, was a, the bottom rib cage actually, right hand to the right hand to the, to, to the bottom rib. Just basically took all the wind to Martin Murray. Um, by, I'd probably say the seventh or eighth round. Actually, I think that Murray had nothing left. It was just pure guts, pure Herculean bollocks to the wall. Got to give it to you, uh, to Matt Murray, Alex. That the fact is, he hung in there as long as he could. He could have bailed out at any time as he, that he felt fit. Give me your take on that fight. Yeah, I mean, I thought that the way it was going to go is that as soon as he got hit, he was going to sort of clamp up and shy away and just try to survive as long as possible and in the end he really didn't do that i mean he he did that for the first couple of rounds he was sticking up the high guard and clinching and tying glovkin up glovkin figured him out and you know it really didn't work and that's when we saw him get hit to the body or you know his rib cage getting absolutely smashed to pieces uh then he decided the tactic was to you know throw some counter rights to try and be a bit more slick about it but Golovkin again just chopped him down. He got he he worked in there with his jab. Every single shot seemed to land against Martin Murray against his head. He started using those looping uh, overhand rights and overhand lefts that we saw against uh, Rubio, and just every single shot seemed to land. And you think it would be disheartening for Murray, but it seemed the more punishment he took, the more punches he threw back, the more sort of determined he was to. You know, really just give it a go, give it everything. He didn't want to, you know, quit out. He didn't want to bail out. He, he wanted to go out on his shield, and he, in the end, that's what he did. I think the fight probably could have been stopped a couple of rounds sooner, but all credit to him. He took a massive beating there, and I think what's most impressive about Golovkin in that fight was the way he learned what Martin was doing. 
he adapted, he was patient, and he dealt with it, you know, the different defences and different tactics that Murray brought to the fight, and he just absolutely systematically broke him down, and it was beautiful to watch. It was beautiful to watch. I mean, I think about the third round, I, I really felt that, you know, even though Murray was hurt at least twice, it didn't really matter what he tried to do. He, you know, there was no way he could hide it. Kurt, I mean, I think by the fifth or sixth round, there was, you know, it was just going to, there was only one way that fight could turn. It was going to be very, very ugly. And you wouldn't, you wouldn't, as, as Alex says, there was no way you could actually begrudge Mark Murray thrown in the cards because it was very hard going. He is tough. As, he proved that he was tough as nails. You know, even Anthony Fowler saying is that the guy is a complete and utter killer, isn't he? Yeah, well, we said last week that, you know, Murray, if he's not anything, he's extremely tough. I mean, we knew it was, it was going to be near impossible for him to win. He, You know, he stands right in front. He hasn't got the power, really, to, to trouble Golovkin, but it was going to be whether Golovkin could break him down. And, you know, I said the body shot would probably be the key because Murray has that high guard and he's very hard to, to break. And, you know, the body shot's got to him, but... He, he, you know, that's what you want to see from an opponent of Golovkin. You know, you, now most of them you're not expecting them to win, but you just want to see him, see them put up an effort. And guys like Rubio just show no effort. This is pointless. And to take Golovkin rounds, especially late, you know, at least we're seeing m- more from Golovkin instead of just seeing like a three round or a two round blower. And you know, Golovkin had to work for it, even though he, he won most of the rounds. It, it was much harder than you know some of his last few fights because. You know, Murray was determined, you know, he weren't going to win, but he was determined to see out the, the the final bell and do something that no one else has done. And, you know, you, you almost got there, but I think it was the right decision. I was mentioning the towel probably could have came in a few rounds earlier, but, you know, just when you thought that maybe that should happen, Murray would fire a combination or he'd, he'd throw a good body shot. And he, he always showed the ref that he was willing to fight on, and you, know, you got to take your hat off to him. And, you know, Golovkin... In those final few rounds, he wasn't even trying to avoid the punches from Murray. You know, no. Murray's a big unit as well, and yeah. he, he, it's not that he's got a terrible defence. He was just so, you know, he was just so not worried about what Murray was firing back. And you know, Channel Five were seeming to hope that maybe Golovkin would tire, but the beating that Murray had taken, he, you know, Golovkin would have to basically be comatose at the end to have any been danger of losing that fight. I mean, he just beat him up and. It's scary the way he was just not even avoiding shots. It was like he was wanting Murray to hit him, so it create opportunities for him to get to Murray. Just so, uh, the over over a hundred listeners know if you want to have have your say, add boxer selling pod on Skype, we'll get you through. Um, as you say, I mean, it was a brutal, absolutely just brutal knockdown uh, three times. You know, I felt that the the third knockdown, that right hand. I thought that might be the end of it, end of it, but you know, next round it was the end of it actually. But to be honest, the pressure that, well, the educated pressure that he did put on, but at the same time as I did feel that Golovkin is open to right uppercuts, and I can't see anyone south or north of middleweight can actually beat Golovkin apart from Andre Ward. I've seen it before. There's Andre one Ward. person that can beat him. There is one per- other person that can beat him. Chris Eubank Jr. I think so. Or James DeGale, according to Spencer. Yeah, Aaron. James DeGale and Chris Eubank Jr. seem to be the ones nah. that... Uh, I've said absolutely for long not. Enough, I've said for long enough that if there's only going to be one person in this current world that's going to retire undefeated, it's going to be Andre Ward. And I still stand by it. Andre Ward will beat Gary Golovkin. I cannot see anyone north or south... Of of middleweight beating them apart from Glov, uh, apart from Andre Ward. I th- I, th- I think uh, Glovkin beats Ward, but uh, but we'll go into that a bit later. Yeah. What what would you think the chance of a Glovkin victory would be if Ward fought him off this long, um, be being on the shelf like didn't have a fight before? Yeah. Like, went straight that, into Glovkin, say for May, no, for instance. Yeah, me, me. It's never going to happen, me. I think uh, Ward's already stated that he wants a a chin up fight. You know, you've got Kessler saying he's willing to fight Ward next. The Danish press, Norwegian press are commenting that, you know, Ward might, oh sorry, Kessler might fight Ward. I've heard, we've heard nothing since then about uh, Ward 
What's up? I, I mean, I think the, uh, the last comments from Ward was signing for uh, for Rock Nation. We've heard nothing since then. I really don't think uh, Kessler against Ward is viable. Um, well, Kessler's what, retired, isn't he? I mean, well, I, th- I think yeah, but I think uh, if unless it's Frotcher Ward, I think he will come out of retirement. Um, Ward, no, I, I, I really don't know what, what his plans are, what Rock Nation's plans mean. This, this, this is the thing. Rock Nation aren't telling us what their plans are for the future, what their TV deals are, you know, what fighters are planning to sign. You know, we don't know. You know, all, all we've heard from them is they've signed on reward. Good deal. You know, he's a good fighter, a great fighter. You know, he was the num- number one fighter at 168. He is not fighting. He's not got a fight arranged. We do not know what's happening with him. So Kessler, as far as I'm concerned, is retired. Golovkin, now, if the WBC are true to their word, they will sanction Golovkin against Miguel Cotto. Surely. <laughs> Cotto's not going to take that. Seriously, now, you know, everyone put the hate to, for Cotto aside. How long do you think he lasts with Golovkin, seriously? Five, at most. Well, we've got Paul McAllister on the line. Paul, do you see Golovkin ending Miguel Cotto within five, six rounds, or does Cotto maybe make, maybe even land his left hook to make Golovkin look honest, maybe last at maybe seven, eight, nine, ten rounds? No. <laughs> to be honest, I think he goes five or six, like Alex said, at most. He's just, he's, he's too small to even give Golovkin any trouble at all. I think the fact that Murray was such a big guy and such yeah. a strong guy is what carried him through there, to be honest. If he was smaller than that, then he'd have gone far, far quicker. But well, the lad's got bollocks the size of melons, especially when you consider the fact that guys like Gale and Rubio, as soon as they felt the power, they just bailed out after two or three rounds each, wasn't it? I wouldn't go even one round with Golovkin. Never mind 11, like Murray just went, so... That lad, he deserves all the plaudits in the world. I know he was never in the fight. He never... I don't even think he won a round on my card. No, but never. Never on my card, mate. I didn't no. even give him a, a, sniff of a, a sniff of a round on my card. The early rounds was his biggest shout. I mean, because nothing really happened. I mean, Murray was clinching a lot. Golovkin was still figuring him out, but I still gave Golovkin... That was the thing. I still gave Golovkin the rounds because he was being positive. He was the one force in the action. So... Those. Those those first two rounds, you actually kind of felt that maybe Murray might spoil the fight for his holding. I think Lewis Pabon, some people on Twitter were saying, oh, fuck's sake, you know, it's Pabon in charge. I might, might, might make a mess of it like he did against uh, uh, Klitschko against Povetkin. In the day, it didn't really matter. He just stood aside and just like Golovkin beat him apart, Paul. Yeah. Um, I think the fight should have been stopped way earlier, to be honest. I, I didn't really hear what they were saying in between the rounds, but did Oliver Harrison at any point say to Martin, I'm going to pull you out or I'm going to, I'm thinking about pulling you out? No, I don't think he did. I think he was saying, uh, he said Golovkin's tiring. Basically, you've took, yeah, he said you've that took a lot, his, yeah. You know, you've took his best, he's still there. You can know, keep going. That was kind mm-hmm. of what they were saying by the sounds of it. I, I can understand them doing that to a point, but you know, at what point does it just get up? become a lost cause completely and you just think, okay, he's just taking unnecessary punishment here. Let's just end this. Well, it's it Murray... Ma- Sorry, Murray... No, no. Go on. No, I was just going to say, Murray, you know, he, he hardly resisted when the end came, did he? I mean, no. the ref stepped in and Murray just almost looked relieved. I mean, it wasn't as if he quit on it. He's just like, oh, thank fuck, I don't have to fight this guy anymore. Yeah. It reminds me a lot of the Brandon Rios-John Murray fight a few years ago. Wasn't as competitive because John Murray was semi-competitive in that fight, but it gets to the point where you're just thinking, this guy is just taking a beating now. What's the point? Pull him out before he gets seriously hurt because this type of fight just shortens his career long term. And it's one of those fights where no matter how many times Murray goes down, the ref's going to ask him, can you go on? Murray's going to say yes. That's just the way he is. Yeah. The flip side of that question, though, is, Paul, is if that was Ian John Lewis in the ring tonight, would that fight have been stopped far sooner? He would have stopped it when Michael Buffer did the introductions, wouldn't he? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be, tell you what. Be if, he, though. if he if he referees Provodnikov versus Matisse, then I, I might just I might just slip my wrists. I have not 
we've we've not all booked the day off work and bought a load of beer for him to just fucking ruin that. There'll have to be a petition. There'll have to be a no Ian John Lewis petition, surely. I th- I think I think there needs to be a petition on the lungs of Stan Collymore type petition <laughs> by the Rangers fans, you know. Is <laughs> how we got him removed from BT was the thing of beauty. That white beaten motherfucker, you know. He is spewing his ring. I think we need to take uh, uh, take along those ring uh, along those lines. Um, the thing is, I can't. What is Golovkin's amateur record just now? Is it something along the lines of three hundred fights? Three, yeah. I, I think it's, it's three hundred and forty-five to five fights. Yeah, that's bad. Never, it, yeah. never, never been knocked down as an amateur professional. Um, has, I, has he even I lost? I, I can't. Has he even lost the round? I didn't watch a lot of his early career, but since I've been watching him, he's not yeah. lost the round. Yeah, I mean, before he came to Abel Sanchez, he was a bit of a a lot cruder but, than he is now. I mean, yeah. he thought of he just said, "Well, I've got the power. I'm just going to blast guys out." But Abel Sanchez really made him refine it and go back to his boxing technique and <clears throat> you know use the two together. I think so. He might have lost a couple of early rounds in some of the uh, earlier fights he had, but you know he's been mostly dominant since. I mean, what? I think the thing, the thing, the only time, he, well, one of the times he went a distance against Meda Budala, he went 78, 74 twice, 79, 75 on the cards. Then beat Ian Gardner. I think he actually went a distance with Ian, uh, Arthur, ba- Arthur Abraham, 78, 73, 77, 74, 78, 73. You know, as, as, as Alex says, I think once Abel Sanchez got his hands on him, he just looks like a completely and utter different beast. The thing is, as well, as Steve Collins has mentioned about this, about this punch over the top that he's throwing, it's kind of like, you know, the, the punch that knocked out, um, what's his name? Rubio. This kind of downward angle, left, right shot, whatever it is, you know, it's like you're saying it's, it's an illegal punch. I need to check this one out, guys. I don't really know if it's a legal punch or not. I don't know, it seemed a bit of a weird point of him to bring up. I mean, it's never really been an issue for anyone else, has it? No one really froze the punch. Why would it be illegal? I mean, what about it is illegal, you know? It's not clipping him on the back of the head, per se. It's hitting him sort of on top of the head, and when's that been illegal? Yeah. Paul, just before we let you go, mate. Paul Smith put up another spirited performance, even though that he was he, sorry he lost he, well widely on the cards this time round. But there's no really much confusion about it. I had it slightly closer. I, I had the same score as the last time, one fifteen, one thirteen. Abraham, how did you score it, mate? And uh, were you anyway so taught or surprised that that Abraham was more dominant this time round? About um, I scored it nine three. Which is one seventeen, one eleven, and I'm not going to hate on Smith too much because it's, it's just boring. But you may get you may get cold, mate. Then whatever. <laughs> <laughs> For that reason, but um, no, it's just Abraham that puts that absolutely dispels any myth about Smith being a world level fighter now, doesn't it? It shows clearly that Abraham turns up really half arsed last time, didn't put any effort into training. And didn't take him at all seriously. And it, it showed in the two performances, didn't it? He was far better tonight than he was last year. And I really want to see him versus Sturm now. Really want to see that because even though he was very good tonight, Abraham, you know, it was his best performance in a while, a good while for me. He, I'd still consider him well past it and Sturm still well past it. But sometimes when two past it fighters fight, yeah. When two guys who were shot fight, it makes a far better fight than it would have been if they'd have fought in the prime. And I want to see that fight next, hopefully. I mentioned on Twitter, mate, and I've got a retweet from the Sirland Brothers that if that fight, I basically begged them to make that fight, I bet Abraham against Sturm, and if it does get made, I'm going to go to that fight, and it's going to be in Germany, and Germany's a great beer, great woman, and great hash, and I'm going to go to it. <laughs> yeah, I hope we get to see that. Is Stan versus Stieglitz a rematch? Is that happening? I don't know. Uh, I really don't know. I think that's going to be the, the, the question if the WBO are going to fucking basically make that a fight. I think, mm-hmm. hopefully, you know, the big money fight for, you know, from their perspective is going to be Abraham against Sturm and hopefully, I mean, who wants to see an Abraham Sturm four fight? Come on, you don't want to see it. No. 
the, the Salons can always say to the, the WBO, you know, let us make this super fight and then Stieglitz can get the winner. You know, they can always say that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That's, that's the way. Yeah. I mean, they Sturm can... and Abraham want the cash out fight, so yeah. maybe they'll, they'll retire afterwards anyway. But Stieglitz, you know, he, he drew his Sturm, so that could be a way around it. They could maybe slip him a bit of cash or put him on an undercard. Exactly. I don't know. I Stieglitz, so. I'm sure, would take a bit of, you know, step aside money and a spot on the undercard. Yeah. I hope so, because I can't be bothered with watching Stan versus Stieglitz. I'd rather just go back and see Stan go straight for Abraham. No, and for, just... for, for Smith, I, you know, his only option now is fighting Fielding at the Echo Arena, isn't it? If he fights at all, because I wouldn't be surprised if he just jacks it in now and thinks, oh, you know what, I'm above fighting for the British title again. I'll just but, retire or something like that. Did anyone see his interview with iFilm London where he said that Andre Ward offered him a fight? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Yeah. So he said he said he offered him, but he had this opportunity lined up. You know, Ward obviously want to come back against an opponent. You know, that could that could still happen, maybe. Oh God. Interesting. Hey, Interesting. Paul. Cheers for that, mate. All right, lads. All the best. Cheers for having me on. Good to, he- Paul, good to hear from me again, actually. Good no, I've been in high. I've been yeah, I know you've been hiding. It. I know you've been hiding behind <laughs> the couch and stuff. He's been you know? hiding and doing a wrestling podcast. I've, I've come out from under me rock now that this. This saga, shall we say, is finally over. <laughs> All the best, mate. All the best. Yes, mate. Hopefully Paul's got wing mirrors on his head, basically, you know, just to kind of keep an eye on what's going on behind them. But I think we've got Rob coming on the call shortly, if Kurt can get him through. If you want to have your say, just add Box Salon Pod on Skype. We're going to be, tonight we're going to be discussing Golovkin against Murray just add and Box Smith against Abraham. Yeah, we've got a feedback there. Smith against... Rob, have you, mic- have you muted Mixler, mate? Yeah, I have, but can you hear me okay? I can hear you fine, mate. Yep, what's in your mind? Well, how's it going? I'll just uh, touch on what Paul was saying about um, Ian John Lewis doing the Matisse Provodnikov fight. Apparently, they're actually they're saving him for the big one, they're saving him for Mayweather Pacquiao. Well, I'll tell you right now. Actually, as, yeah, next next Thursday we're going to be discussing fighter A, fighter B, and some detail. That is going to be the only time we're going to be discussing this fight. I mean, how much, how often do you want us to talk about this fight? We've discussed it for five, six years now. But it's signed now. You can you can it's, talk about it now. It's signed. Yeah, but it's signed. Listen, okay, it's signed. But what happens if a fighter uh, feels feels the test? What if uh, Floyd Mayweather slaps his misses about? He goes back to jail. The fight's off. You know, Kurt, back me up, mate. You said it yourself last night. Is how much more can we say about what's going to happen in this fucking fight? Mayweather is going to win it. Simple as that, isn't it? I think you, you've got to follow what the what the public wants. The public wants. The public got. The public have got what they wanted. They've got the they've got the fight thus far. Let's just fucking get to fight week. Then we know we've got a fight because anything can happen between now and then. I'm okay. making the point that Pacquiao is going to win. By the way, I'm saying that right now. I think Floyd is the favourite and he probably will win, but I think it's a more competitive fight than it would have been in 2010, personally. Yeah, Pacquiao yeah, would have destroyed him back then. No, it's a, now it's it's closer. a competitive fight, still. That Manny's going to do it. That's a big big shout, big shout. Yeah, I think he's going to do it. I think that there's a reason, well, I don't really want to discuss this too much. I can already imagine Andy seething because we are talking I'm about seething. it. Listen, I'm, I'm grinding my teeth. Yeah. <laughs> I've, got, I've got a Thursday show fucking planned for next Thursday, right? All right and we'll move I really on. don't want to go into much detail because I've been over it countless motherfucking times on the fucking forums. My wife last night says to me, why are you not pumped? She says, because... I've heard it all before. Okay, the fight's been signed. I'm happy the fight has been signed. We've got 11 weeks to go with this bullshit. How often do you want us to talk about it? What I'm going to do is this. Next Thursday, we've got a live show, 8pm GMT time. We will discuss the fight in any detail that you want. How far you want to go with it, no problem. We can discuss it. After that, it is done finito. We will then discuss the fight one week before the fight, because why? I don't want to discuss a fight for the next ten motherfucking weeks. I mean, Kurt, you said that last night to me, mate. How often can we discuss the bullshit is going to get spoken about for the next ten weeks? It's, we can't do it. I mean, this is this isn't Muhammad Ali and fucking Joe Frazier. 
we spent so long on the forums and social media over the years. That's that's the problem. It's tiring me. It's tiring me. Uh, it's, uh, it's really awesome. You want to put a gun to your head. You want to get a bottle of whiskey. You want to say goodbye to your parents, your mo- your mother, your kids, your wife. You know, you want to put a gun to your head. You don't want to do it anymore. Anyway, Rob, what did you think of Martin <laughs> Murray tonight? <laughs> hey, it's good to see, it's good to see uh, some ruling by committee there. Um, I I'm, thought, the committee. Uh, no. I'm the committee. <laughs> you are the committee. You are the dictator, mate. Yep. I'm fucking. Um, I'm Hitler. I am. What's the African uh, dictator's name from Uganda again? Idi Amin. I'm not. What's that? I even offered to stop um, this podcast actually to, to, to even stop about talking about Manny Pacquiao Mayweather. Offer the step down, but no, nah, nobody wants to do it. Anyway, Rob, when you go, mate. Yeah, you got to rate Murray for for sticking in there, showing some heart. Both. I thought he was going to. Um, I thought he was going to get out of there. I thought Golovkin was going to get him out of there quicker. To be honest, I thought Murray was showing up for a payday. Be interesting to see what Murray does next. Actually, maybe he tries to move up to 168 and kind of get in the mix with the Gale and Groves because obviously they would be. They'd be pretty big fights, wouldn't they? I think that's where you see him go next. He looks big enough as well to go up there. Oh yeah, no doubt about it. I think it's time. It's time for. I mean, he's made some good money with his with his deal, and I think he made some good money tonight. But I think if he if De Gale or Groves have world titles and Murray's the contender, you know, he'll he'll he'll, he'll do all right out of that. I mean, is, is he struggling at 160, though? I mean, is he struggling to make weight? Uh, I think he should stay there. I think there's still opportunities there to be had, I think. What would the opportunities be, though? Like, who? Yeah, we, I don't think, mac- unless he signs with Al Heyman, he's, there's nowhere else for him to go. When there was, like, the, the the British guys there and Andy Lee, there was a lot of fights that could be made, but they never happened. So maybe he might be looking at the British guys, you know, eight pounds north as opportunities. I mean, he looks big enough, but it just depends. I mean, you don't know what, how they're going to, you know, where they're going to move him next. And you're also, what condition is he, he going to be in? Because that was a pretty bad beat, and I thought he took. There's still yeah. guys like, you know, there's still guys, obviously, you know, Billy Joe Saunders. There's still Andy Lee. There's still... Um, Solomon, Daniel so, Gill. So, well, Island, Solomon, but... Then Dam. Uh, yeah, Indam and uh, Lemieux, the winner of that, he could easily fight either of them. Um, you know, you say yeah, about him going up... Maybe so HBO say, because he's kind of put in one of the better performances against Golovkin in a while, maybe HBO say, oh, we'll give you another fight against the Lemieux and Dam winner, yeah. But I'm talking about if he wants to make some serious cash, then he's he, he's going to have to target Groves and DeGale, I think. Yeah, I mean, well, what's what's the deal just now actually with with Rodney Berman? Is it not a million a million a, is it a million pounds, million dollars per fight or something? He's no, got it was with? he had a it was a million for the three fights he had last year. On right, uh, so that was his third fight tonight. No, no, he had Aye, that would be had fight tonight. No, he had three fights. Yeah, that was his fourth fight. That was the end of his contract, I believe. I think he got a million last year for the three fights he had, and I don't know what he got for tonight. Probably another million, I'd guess, but. Well, if he's invested that properly, then listen, I don't care who you are, a a million quid, million dollars, million pounds, whatever it is, if you invest it properly, you get a wee income per week, per month. I mean, what? Say, three, four thousand pounds. Anybody can live off that. Anybody, especially you know, know, the working man can live off three thousand, three, four thousand pounds a month easily. Oh yeah, but there's a there's a big difference between having you know like a million and a half in the bank to last fifty years, and having you know six or seven million in the bank that that's a big change in your lifestyle. You know. True, but then again, as you say, is who's going to fight to get that money? And I don't think there's anyone out there unless I mean he's never going to fight Cotto. At that weight, I mean, Cotto's the, you know, what we're told is the third highest payday at the weight. Cotto's going to be looking at a £155 deal. There's no chance money's going to make 155 I really can't see it. Uh, I think a move up in weight is going to be the question. Kessler's retired, who would be the big money fight in Denmark. You know, he was apparently offered, what was it, £1.5 million pounds to fight Ward in Denmark. I really think that was bullshit. I think if he's going to want a big money fight, I think it's going to be either Abraham or Sturm, or perhaps uh, Stieglitz in Germany, which I think at the best part, you're looking at maybe half a million, 
a million euros. What is that? Seven hundred fifty thousand pounds. Yeah, think, yeah, it's true. The thing is, with moving up to one six eight, though, is that Golovkin's going to be going back up there soon, and it's not as if he wants to be in the same division I don't as think him he again. Won't. I don't, yeah, I don't think he will either. I, don't, I, I really don't think Golovkin will move up. I mean, I, I've watched him from an amateur. I think he's a bona fide middleweight, career middleweight. Like you know. We keep hearing the excuses from Carol Froch fans and, you know, from reporters. I've always says, why doesn't Froch move up to 175 and fight Stevenson for the lineal light heavyweight title? But people say, well, listen, he only weighed 173 against Booty. Um, he's a career super middleweight. You know, people will expect you know, the same argument with Golovkin. I really think that Golovkin is a career middleweight, like Froch is a career 168 pounder, pounder, sorry. I really think that his career should stay at 160. Uh, as I say, we really don't know what the fuck is happening with Andre Ward, in all honesty. That's a fine if he does stay at middleweight, but he's got to get the opportunities, he's got to have yeah. the fights, and that's, you know, if there's nothing there, what's he going to do? Well, he the... can't just fight nothing, he can't fight, you know, Quillen's not going to fight him. You know, who's going to fight him? He's got to have the test, otherwise he's just, people are going to not be interested in him anymore. Well, Rob, let me ask you this, Peter Quillen has come out there in the last seven, ten days that he's won, he's won to fight Andy Lee afterwards. Once he wins, he's going to fight everyone at the weight. Does he fight Golovkin after that? No, I don't, and it's not, I don't know if it's necessarily up to him, is it? It's up to, no. it's up to Al Heyman. And um, I mean, I'm not as harsh on Heyman as, as I mean, I, I'm, I quite like some of the stuff he's doing, especially living out here in the US. It's going to be pretty good seeing some good boxing on every week that I don't necessarily have to pay a lot of money for but yeah he does seem to um i think the only way triple g fights some of those guys is if triple g signs with Heyman himself you know which i'd say that that's the only way that fight happens if it if triple g ends up signing with Heyman, you know and the thing is with quill and the, the two things that keep him kind of relevant he's one he's old and two if he's got a bout and if he fights golovkin i mean both of those will go most likely won't they yeah and Heyman knows this I think the the thing we can kind of count on maybe is that the WBC have said they will order the Cotto fight. So Cotto gets one more fight and then he has to fight Golovkin, right? So it's kind of... And I know you guys aren't massive fans of of, of uh, Cotto, but I, I actually think Cotto might take that fight if the circumstances are right. I mean, I think the weight will be lower than 160, obviously, and it will be in New York and stuff. But... Kyle will make a lot of money if he fights Golovkin because he'll probably be getting eighty, ninety percent of the purse, and it'll the fight will sell out anywhere. It'll probably sell out a stadium in New York now, so I could see him taking it. Um, I was just going to say actually as well as I think one of the things is Rob. Finally, is do you ever think or are you afraid of the fact is that, you know, Golovkin, even though he's 32, he hasn't taken a lot of punishment, do you ever think the fact is he might just hit the crisp of a wave at some point and he's going to go over the hill? I mean, he's not going to get the, he's not getting the big fights. He's doing what we expect him to do is he's beating the, so, the so-called top 10, peripheral top 10 fighters. When it comes to the, that big right vocal moment, to fight a top guy, is he going to come up short? Is he going to burn out? Is he going to be past his prime by that point? No, I really do, and I, I mean, I'm not saying he's top of the pound for pound list because he hasn't he hasn't proven it like um, like the other fighters have. But I do think if I'd back him to beat anybody else in the world, in and around his weight class and any fight between 154 and 168, I'd back him to beat anyone, including Andre Ward. Even though we haven't seen him fight a box yet, but to me, he's, he's flawless. I don't see anything that he does wrong. I mean, people talk about him getting hit too much, but that's bullshit. If you actually look at um, some of the statistics, I was listening to, him to the um, HBO boxing podcast, and yeah. they were saying he's like the third Loving or jabs per best. Round. Yeah, he's got the third or fourth best defense second. in boxing statistically, yeah. Was I it heard second? that, actually. Yeah. It's, it, yeah, it was, it was saying to Floyd Mayweather, from what I hear. Yeah, he, so that so he landed like, he landed something like eleven jabs per round to Martin Murray's three point three point three two jabs yeah. per round. I think that's okay. fighting. That, that meal you talk about Vladimir Klitschko having the best jab in boxing. 
he even he doesn't even land that, that many jabs per round. That 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 is a frightening statistic. It just I mean, everything I, about everything he does is just is just class. I just don't see anything about him that looks looks bad at all. And even if he does get hit, his chin seems to hold up. And it's not like there's anybody unless he went all the way to one seventy five and fought Kovalev and Stevenson, there's nobody around one fifty four to one sixty eight that is a a stupidly big puncher, is there? That's true, actually. I really I mean, can't see the, it. The biggest puncher would be would be Frotch, and he's not. Frotch is a big puncher, but he's not like a, a stupid. You know, he's not crazy power, is he? No, no. I mean, I th- I think well, Frotch. You know, Alex is probably the best person to ask <laughs> ask this question. But I really don't think Frotch is a you know as great puncher that he's made out to be. He's probably a heavy puncher. He probably enough to make you look honest. He's, he's, he's yeah, he, he he's above he's average. He's, he's heavy like handed. B, he's like a B. He's like a B plus power where someone like Golovkin or Vladimir Klitschko are uh, uh, kind of like A plus power, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, he can. It will wake you up when he snaps you in the face, but you know he's not going to lay you out unless it's the perfect punch like he got against Groves. You know, yeah. he caught Groves with that, and that was just. Just an absolute belter. He's got to, uh, he's got to hit you with a cobra for you to be sparked out. <laughs> <laughs> with the cobra. It- on, on that thought, uh, Rob, just before we let you go, give me your final comments on Smith against Abraham before we let you go. Um, I mean, fair play to Smith. He went out and, and did his stuff. I think uh, I, I tend to agree with Kurt. I think he, he, he might end up getting that ward fight, but if not, I'd be happy to see Smith against Fielding. Um, that be it. I'm sure that'd be a big fight and would sell out in Liverpool. I'd be happy to watch that. Um, Abraham, I mean, he's there for the taking. Um, if it, it I, I wouldn't be shocked if if Groves ends up getting that shot. That would seem like an easy an easier way for Groves to get a world title rather than going to the US to fight Durrell. But um, I think touching on what was mentioned about Abraham Sturm, apparently the I, I think it was the Berliner guy on uh, Chet Cook was saying. And I might be wrong about this, but he was saying that the the new um, TV deal the Sowlands has has an option for pay per view, which they haven't really done in Germany before. Yeah. So maybe that's that could be the first time they they go and do a pay per view, and if it's in the summer, they can do an outdoor venue in Germany and and make it a mega fight. Yeah, I, th- I think I read that they have the options of like four pay per views a year if if they can like get the events together. So yeah, yeah it's, I think it's, a- Abraham Sturm ticks all the boxes, isn't it? It's, it's like yeah. the, you know, that's like the German Pacquiao Mayweather, isn't it? They, they were at the same division for so long, and now it's kind of dragged on a little bit, but it's still a massive fight. Okay, Rob, cheers for that, mate. Hey, on, guys. All the best, mate. Cheers, cheers. mate. I think we've got John O'Donnell on the call just now. John, you there, mate? Hi, how's it going? We'll be, we'll be a bit of feedback after you there, mate. How are you, how are you doing? Good now. Um, glad to see the whole Smith-Abraham saga come to end tonight. Um, I thought Smith on all right again, but... Uh, just a question. Is the whole war thing actually a joke, or is it actually true he did get offered a fight with Ward? I don't know how, how true that is. It's a Paul's, yeah, he's claimed it. He says, you know, he's he was offered it as Ward's comeback. Because Ward's obviously looking for a comeback fight. He wants to ease himself back into it. And I suppose they're looking at Smith as an easy fight for Ward and also a bit of a credible name coming off the Abraham fight. And, I mean, yeah, according to him, he was offered it, but he went with the Abraham rematch. So I don't know if whether he'll be still in the frame. But, oh, I mean, I don't know Ward if it's true either. Somewhere. I mean, he's the only one that's mentioned it. I haven't heard anyone else say that, you know, it's happening. I mean, yeah, but, you know, I wouldn't say Paul's necessarily lying, but, you know. To be honest, you know, I, I do my level best, you know, every day to try and keep up to date with, um, you know, the updates, the happenings, the comments in the box and all that stuff. I haven't heard a potential fight. I mean, the, the first time I heard of it was, was Rob mentioning there, a uh, war against Smith. I've, I've, to be honest, I must have been out, out in the loop in this one. When was this mentioned? He said it in a, an iFilm London interview. What two di- the, the the Wayne? I think it was. Yeah, the Wayne for the fight, or the the press conference before the Wayne. Yeah, he, he said it to Coogan. There's a video on YouTube. He said it was after right. it, and they surely, were this fight. Surely, be to God, Joe Gallagher or Eddie Hearn would have been both about that though. 
Unless he's getting life-changing money, as Eddie Hearn calls it. Yeah. <laughs> well, the thing is, you know, okay, okay, listen, Kurt, thank you for mentioning that to me, because now I can get on a butt of a shit fest. Uh-oh. Here we go. This is the fucking fact of the matter is, Andre Ward cannot draw flies to shit. He cannot <laughs> fill out. He cannot fill out his toilet. He cannot fill out his phone box. His phone box. His his living room. His kitchen. His dinette. His toilet. So what the fuck does he think that Paul Smith is going to get life changing money, John, to face on reward? It's, uh, it's just idea. He's it's just talking about his whole, ass, isn't he? He's the whole idea his of of, of Paul Smith fighting Andrew Ward just seems ridiculous. Do you know what exactly. It, it, it is. It is funny. I mean, as you said, John, you didn't know if it was a joke or not. So that that says it everything itself. Yeah. The thing like, is, I was going to say Andrew Ward got. Two million for fighting Edwin Rodriguez. Rodriguez is, you know, a half decent fighter. You know, we spoke to him before. He's, you know, pretty good. He's better than Paul Smith. But um, I think Rodriguez was getting just under a million for that. I think eight hundred thousand, nine hundred thousand. Yeah, and he got fined. He got fined at least was it twenty percent of that that purse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two hundred thousand dollars. He got he got fined for missing weight. Yeah, I mean, and he still got dominated. Well, yeah, I mean, but the thing is, Smith must be seeing that and thinking, well. You know, maybe I could get a lot of money out of that because obviously HBO are paying out their ass for Ward these days. But apparently, they told him to piss off recently because apparently Ward um, was sniffing around Showtime the other day because they uh, HBO rebuffed his uh, desire to fight. You know, a soft touch for lots of money. He went instantly sniffing over to Showtime for an easy fight, but apparently they told him to piss off as well. Maybe Eddie wants to make it an Anfield big summer fight. Andre Ward over here. <laughs> uh, listen, I can remember Joe Gallagher mentioned after that first fight with Abraham and Smith that you know the rematch gets made at, at Anfield. I <laughs> right, okay, what happens? The fights the O2 in Berlin. You know, this is no way it's going to happen. John, mate, just before I let you go, give me your thoughts on Gary Golovkin's uh, basically shut out performance and destruction against Matt Murray. Um. Like, uh, we talk about bravery, like, you know, you heard Scully the whole thing tonight talking about Paul Smith's brave performance. I mean, bravery is Matt Murray tonight, in fairness to him, you know. Like, maybe he should have been pulled out a bit earlier, but, you know, he, he you know, he, he stuck in there for a good while. And apart from the, I know he obviously took two body shots been done twice, but apart from the the shot in the tent where he went down, he, he didn't look like he was terribly hurt by, he obviously looked busted up and stuff, but he didn't look like terribly hurt or shaken by, um, some of the punishment he was taking, so we have to give him credit for that. But going back to a point you made a while ago, um, I was thinking the same. Glavkin's 32. You do fear that we actually might miss out on Glavkin in, in, in a way that he might not. Like, who's who's he going to fight next? Who's going to fight in 2015? That's going to be a huge fight. You, you do. I do feel like that we might miss out on him being an actual superstar because he just won't get the fights. Because I don't. I don't see him going up to super middle, and I actually kind of, like nobody comes to mind apart from maybe Canelo. That's going to be a mega fight for him, you know. Yeah, I know. I listen, mate. I'll be honest with you. Listen, I've given Canelo shit in the past for his his light middleweight reign of destruction, shall we say? Um, I think after the point that he stepped up the face, uh, Austin Trout, we've seen a, a change in his character. Uh, I, I, listen, I wouldn't say a change in his character. I would say it was rather a change in his forcefulness. I think he's pushed his matter with Golden Boy. He wants the big fights. He got the big fight. Uh, listen, uh, I, I know what Kurt's thinking here. Kurt's going to be saying he quit mentally against Floyd Mayweather. Listen, I, re- I appreciate that comment. Uh, it's, it is highly, highly true. But at the same time, as he wants the big fights, he wanted the Cotto fight. Cotto standing on the on the on the curb side, but he's he's like a, a fat bride. Nobody wants to shag. Nobody wants to ride. Nobody wants to marry her. Yeah, that's what he's saying, you know, Manny and Floyd are laughing at him, Canelo's in the back seat like that, fuck you bitch, I'm fighting the angle to Kirtland for so many millions or whatever it is, Cotto is now left with a, with no one, who's he going to fight next? Is it going to be Rios, is it going to be Bradley? No one knows, I think Canelo's now going to have to go back to the table and say, listen, if you want the fight, make me a decent offer, because no one's going to want to pay to watch Bradley a welterweight against fucking Cotto up at one six, well, one five five, one five six. I mean, Rios, come on, don't, man, he doesn't deserve that fucking fight. Don't forget your mate Amir Khan. Um, Fuck off. He wants Fuck Kyle you, man. Listen, <laughs> Steve Donnie was on this call right now. He'll be getting shot. Amir Khan. 
Never. Absolutely. Listen, I'm trying to be kind of calm here. Listen, come on, my, my wife's upstairs sleeping, my daughter's in the next room sleeping. I really don't want to be shouting about this, but I'm here can fighting for the lineal middleweight title. If that were to happen, I would quit boxing, podcasting, I will quit boxing forums, writing just, the whole shebang. Never going to happen, mate. But just think, if Khan fought Kato and won, Khan's probably dumb enough to then take on Golovkin. Now, if you don't like Khan, unless you're Donnie, you just come on. Yeah. That's, that's going to be a good night. Yeah, true, but Donnie's a troll when it comes to Khan, actually. No, I really do think Donnie's a troll when it comes to Khan. I've, I've never met an American who is so high on a British fighter. You know, usually, think about, think about this, right? Go back in history. Sorry about this, Jack, but go back in history, right? Americans, fighters or journalists or, you know, Amer- just Americans in general always felt that British fighters were chinny, right? And here you've got the most chinniest British fighter, well, par excellence, par David Price, obviously, right? Then you have Amir Khan, who's the chinniest motherfucker you can get out, right? Okay? And, You've got an American, <laughs> you've got an American bigging him up as if he has the second coming of Sugar Ray Robinson, Sugar Ray Leonard, Roberto Duran, and, you know, well, Fredo Benitez, because he's got this great defense now. You know, he is not a great fighter. You know, if Kyle was here right now, he'd be saying the same fucking thing. He is not what he expect. He has not got a great chin, is what, you know, Nat Fisher would say. Uh, what the Bimsey would say is, as well as he is a chinny fighter, a typical British fighter with no chin. Simple as that. Pony Bill, you. Andy will be so upset. Well, here Andy. he comes. Here he comes. <laughs> <laughs> you kept that one quiet, you motherfucker. You just stuck in there, eh? <laughs> Andy is just so upset at the prospect of Amir Khan becoming the lineal middleweight champion. Never going to help him, bitch. Never going to help him. J- June 13th. Is before Ramadan. It's two days before Ramadan. It's also the Puerto Rican Day Parade Eve. He's got it all figured out. Never going to happen, Donny, mate. Never going to happen. This is bringing enough money to the table. John, anything else in your mind, mate? <laughs> no, that's it. No, cheers for letting me in. Yeah, what is, mate? All the best. Thanks, John. Cheers. Just want to go on the call, Donny. Listen, give me your... Th- Did you catch a fight tonight? Oh, I guess you didn't. Nope. I've seen your comments on Twitter. I think you said you didn't see the fights. No, I didn't. Yeah, I was, that's why I was just uh, uh, listening in. But uh, I thought it might be humorous if I just called up for that one second. <laughs> you bitch. You bitch. It's, it's, it's half past one in the morning over here. I've still got a beer in my hand. And you know, you, you're only here to troll me, but I'm your fucking can of a middleweight title. Kurt, who that else is going to call next, mate? I've got Jack coming on. Jack. I think we'll have a busy, busy podcast tomorrow. Dave the Hater wants back on. Matty D is on the on the road back as well. Tommy Allen's coming back as well. They're all returning now. The podcast is he's getting bigger. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Donnie, good, uh, what did you think about uh, Carson Jones last week? Oh, um, oh, that's right, because I wasn't here last week. Uh, well, I did call it, and uh, on Twitter I got called an idiot by a bunch of people, uh, <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I did say this would happen. I mean, yeah, the stoppage was uh, not good, but I mean, you know, I, obviously he should have been given the opportunity. But um, but I, I think Carson Jones would have taken that fight anyways eventually. Uh, it's not the optimal weight for him. I think he could cut back down to 147, but he's not going to get fights there. And I think uh, now being he has that silver title or whatever, I mean, he can he can probably work his way into a mandatory position at 154 and get a fight. So. Uh, more power to him. He's uh, certainly uh, taken the hard road. He's he's fought uh, some good. Uh, some good uh, oh, for Christ's sake! Was, he's fought some was, good. Was some Stella, that bitch. Oh. <laughs> he's fought some good <laughs> fighters, and uh, you know he hasn't had any big uh, promotional backing behind him before. Uh, and he's found this little niche here, fighting in the UK. Uh, they might actually bring him back for the rematch, maybe not. But uh, Eddie Hearn will find a way to bring him back over because. He's probably well, uh, more well known over on the streets in the UK than he is in uh, Oklahoma. So, because um, uh, you know, I mean, that's just uh, you know, as a consequence of the big fights he's been in over there. So, uh, you know, yeah, I was uh, I was impressed with his performance, and he, he showed that he wasn't uh, he wasn't done yet. Don't need baseball hanging on the call. I think Kurt's going to add, and who, who's coming on, Kurt? Yeah, Jack's added. Jack, are you there, mate? 
So yeah, my, I'm here, my wife, my wife's been actually trying to add me on the call as well because apparently I'm shouting from downstairs. How you doing, Jack? <laughs> Can you hear me? Cut out height. Uh, no, she's no, it's just she's calmed down because it, actually, believe it or not, actually, during the Paul Smith fight, when Paul Smith got rocked in that third round, the legs went. Anybody catch the legs going? I was like, get fucking in there! No, he's like, oh, calm down. He's British, <laughs> Eddie. He's British. I was like, I don't give a fuck. Just get in the him, you know. Anyway, Jack, how you doing, mate? I said I haven't spoke to you in a while. How you doing? Yeah, I'm, I'm very well, thanks. Uh, been enjoying the uh, late night listen, but yeah. A couple yeah. of good fights tonight. Yeah, a couple of good fights. We'll obviously we'll discuss and Golovkin against Murray and Smith against Abraham. Give me your, first of all, give me your, your thoughts on Golovkin against Murray. Yeah, the um, that fight I enjoyed a lot more than um, the one before, to be honest. The massacre, um, wasn't it? That was a massacre, that fight. Yeah, absolutely. It was um, yeah, an assassination, really, from uh, Golovkin. Um, pretty brutal, just sort of... As a few of you have said, almost punch perfect. I think um, the most impressive thing was after a while when he realised Murray was so so durable, he decided to just sort of like pop his head right in front of Murray and uh, tempt him into uh, landing a few shots of his own and look to just counter straight off um, off Murray's um, rare ventures forward. Does anyone know? I've been seeing some comments on Twitter actually tonight about. Chavez uh, Jr. mentioned something about Golovkin. Anyone know what's been getting said here? Chavez. I mean, I don't know, but but whatever trash talk is being made, I mean, it's completely yeah. ridiculous. I mean, that's Chavez has basically said, "Come up to my weight, yeah. and I'll knock you out." Right, what is his weight though? Is it fucking no one knows. fat bastard weight? Is that two hundred? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fucking two hundred and twelve pounds, fat bastard weight. Fuck you, cunt. I mean, listen. If anyone deserves to be dictated to as uh, Chavez Jr. because as you failed two drugs tests, motherfucker, you've missed weight at least twice that I can think of. You've got no bargaining power. The only thing that you're bargaining off is your father's name. And even then, I would still report you under the Trade Descriptions Act. You do not deserve to even be classed as an A-side fighter. <laughs> Fact. Well, I mean, the thing is, though, is that, I mean, you know, Bob Arum offered him $8 million to fight Golovkin, and uh, he went to go fight, he went to go sign with Heyman, and he's fighting Fanfara for $2 million. I think that's really all you need to know. <laughs> there we go. I mean, it's like Peter Quill at the end of the day, you know, you don't back a $1.4 million payday, you know, against the easier fight against Matt Kurobov. And then what do you do? You end up fighting for the title that you vacated for less money. You know, and for what I understand, Andy Lee is fighting uh, Quillen for one million dollars. So what the fuck is Quillen making? Who knows? Jack, how did you score Abraham against Murray? Uh, sorry, Abraham against Smith. Did you score it wider than wider yeah, than the first I, fight, or was it slightly closer? I had the same score, one fifteen, one one thirteen for for Abraham. Tonight you had it that close. Yeah, I did, mate. I mean. I, I did give. I don't know if it was benefit of the doubt. I did think at the same time as that. Uh, sorry, Smith was. Even though he threw, he threw a lot of leather. It wasn't landing. Abraham at the same time was wasn't. Well, he did land actually. It was like the first fight at the end of the day. I, I called it last week when when Abraham landed Smith. You know, he felt it. He did feel it. But I did think as well as he showed a lot of guts tonight. And I was. I'm not a Smith fan. I've seen him act like a, like a complete twat. To some people, when I've been up in Scotland, I did felt that he won the last, the last, where's my scorecard actually? It's on my phone, and my phone's showing the living room. I need to grab my scorecard just to give him my, my exact scores, but 115-112 for me, one, oh, sorry, 115-113, sorry, for Abraham. Yeah, I, I had it a bit wider, I had 117-111, um, maybe a li- maybe one one round closer to uh, to Smith, but it was... It was one of those fights where eye test just tells you Abraham won the fight, but didn't really look too good like doing so, in my opinion. I think somebody with a bit more speed is is really gonna uh, take that title off off Abraham. But I can see I can see him hanging around in, in Germany for the, the Sturm fight, which probably won't expose him too badly and give him another like absolutely massive payday. So um, I think he'll be looked after pretty well. Yeah, I think he will as well. I just I mean. My phone's actually just died of juice, so I can't tell you exactly what I scored the fight or can I mention it tomorrow, but 
Uh, yeah, I mean, listen, the, the, the Stuart Abraham fight, I think maybe Kurt mentioned it a few podcasts ago. Um, you know, that has been the, the, the one fight that we've been, we've been calling for ever since the two guys were at middleweight. If the fight gets made, I'm really, really thinking about actually even going to Germany to watch a fight. Um, even though it's two guys past their prime, but it's cut, I don't know if it was you cut or maybe Alex mentioned it, the fact is, when you get two guys past their prime, aka Ali, Frazier 3, I'm not gonna even, even attempt to say that it's gonna be the same fucking fight, obviously, but, you guys past their prime, they're slow, flat footed, you might get a more exciting fight. Well, Stan Stieglitz is a pretty good fight as well, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, eh? Well, there you go. I mean, like we said, Sturm, Abraham, seems the most logical thing next, and hopefully it is made. Jack, you're going to call on, you're going to, you, sorry, you're going to call on Thursday. We're going to have a live show, Pacquiao Mayweather. It's going to be the only comments, only, between now. We've got, we've got 11 weeks today, so 11 weeks yesterday, actually, as well. It's what, 1.36 in the morning over here. It's going to be 11 weeks today, before the fight, next Thursday is going to be the only comments that any one of this podcast is going to be allowed to say, as long as I'm in charge of it anyway, unless Matty D decides to come back and says that I'm in charge, which he can come back and do any day that he wants. We're going to speak about the, the fight one week before the fight. How are you going to call in on Thursday? Yeah, I'll, t- I'll try to call on um, if there's enough space. I'm sure everybody's going to be queuing up as it's a one-off. So, um, But yeah, just briefly before um, I let you yeah, you crack on with the last few callers. Um, you mentioned about, about Golovkin moving up. Do you not think the influence of HBO might make the move down a little bit more likely? I mean, it seems like they're they're almost looking for an opportunity to make him that pay-per-view attraction in the States. And there seems to be a bit more US sway in the, um, the 154 division than there is. Most of them... Most of them are with Heyman, though. That's the problem. Yeah. yeah. Donny, what do you think? I mean, obviously HBO are kind of, they really are pushing Golovkin. You hear Jim Lampley get interviewed at some times as, you know, we never hear as who's going to be the big, next big stars in the sports. You usually hear Jim Lampley mention uh, Golovkin and uh, Kovalev. Yeah, I mean, uh, he's going to, I think he has to move up in order to um, sort of, reach this the the big stardom level um the funny thing is is that i mean he i think he would have easily reached it by moving up and fighting chavez but chavez didn't want it and and for good reason i mean he he'd get out fought um and he'd get he he probably if it's possible to stop chavez jr i think golovkin would have been the guy to do it but um you know i mean he'll, he'll move up to 168 probably for ward when Ward comes back, I mean, you know, HBO really likes Andre Ward. We we know that. Um, I didn't hear this thing about Ward, as uh, Alex said, you know, um, looking across the street at Showtime. But um, but anyways, uh, yeah, I, I think that I think that that fight will eventually happen. The thing is, though, is that I mean, Ward, yeah, he he has all these uh, diva-like demands, but he's not the kind of star that Chavez Jr. is. Whether Chavez Jr.'s stardom is warranted or not is one thing, but, um, I mean, uh, he, he doesn't have that. He, he has A-side demands, but he doesn't have A-side drawing power is what it comes down to. Uh, and um, and I think that that fight will, the, the fight will happen because he's sort of the biggest biggest star that actually will fight Golovkin. Uh, I don't see Cotto doing it. I don't see Chavez doing it, especially not. Um, and I don't see Frosch doing it before he retires. So, yeah, what is that big fight that'll catapult him to the superstardom? I mean, I don't, I don't know what it is, really. I mean, is, maybe Canelo. Canelo could do it, yeah. and I think, I really think that's why Golovkin is, uh, reticent to move up. Because I think he's waiting, because he knows that Canelo's tied at that weight. That's why that Canelo doesn't really even fight at 154. He fights at 155 and 156 now, because, um, you know, he, he, that 154 is very difficult for him to make. So I think he's waiting for Canelo to move up because Canelo has already shown a willingness to fight everybody, um, and um, and so you know now that uh, now that Canelo is, is, seems to be that type of a fighter, uh, Golovkin thinks he'll actually get that fight, and um, and the Mexicans will definitely want to see it. I mean, Mexicans seeming seemingly like Golovkin, he entered to cheers against Rubio at the StubHub Center. 
uh, despite the fact that Rubio was the Mexican fighter. Um, so I think I think that's what he's waiting around for. I think the whole game is probably premised around around Canelo Alvarez. Yeah, I think outside of Canelo, you've got, I guess, is, is Lara under Heyman? Yep. So move past him. I think Andrade will be the next one who isn't Heyman and is in that that way. Andrade is Heyman. No, he's Heyman not. Is, no, he's, he's not. not. Isn't he? No, he's not. No. He's not. He's, not, no. he's um. He's one of the... Who knows yeah. what's happening with Andrade, actually. I mean, he's meant to fight Charlo. Charlo's now fighting for a world title, a light middleweight. Charlo's now... Uh, sorry, Andrade's... I don't know what the fuck he's doing. Martinez is want a comeback fight before he retires. Andy Lee is... I would probably... I would back him to beat Quillen, but at the same time, I think he might lose. Golovkin's options are rapidly running out, in all honesty. And at the same time as well as Jack, finally, before we let you go, is... Mm-hmm. Some people would argue that tonight was, you know, the fight for the lineal middleweight title. Some people had Mark Murray beating Sergio Martinez. Yeah, absolutely. So, essentially, it's it's going to be a case of whatever whatever the move up or down pays the most money. And if Canelo's intent on hanging around a little bit longer, then it, no, there's no other option, is there? No, mate, not at all. Anyway, Jack, cheers for that, okay. mate. Okay. Yeah, no worries. Thanks All the best. Me. Cheers. Coming on cheers, on guys. the call next, we've got Gareth Young. Gareth, mate, where do you want to start off with? Do you want to start Golovkin against Murray, or do you want to start with Smith against Abraham? I'll start off with Golovkin if we can. Yeah, no problem, mate. Give me your thoughts. I mean, obviously, it was a, my personal opinion. I didn't even give uh, Murray a round. It seems no. you've, you've got to, you've got to give it to you. The, the guy's got balls of steel. You know, lesser guys, Rubio, for instance, quit. Against Murray, uh, sorry, against Golovkin. Murray, there was not an ounce of quitting him there tonight. No, there's no quitting him tonight. Like he was, he showed a lot of balls, like he showed a lot of steel, but he never looked like he, he had a few bursts. And I think they were overhyping his bursts that he was given. What really bugged me was uh, Steve Collins was saying um, he should have been pressuring him all the time, and nobody's ever done that to Golovkin, as if like that's the key to do it. But then as if it's easier do to it. do that. Yeah, as if it's so easy to do. You know what I mean? But, exactly. Uh, I mean, how's he going to pressure him? I mean, when Golovkin punches him back, he's going to be on his ass. It's his footwork. It's footwork. It's so subtle, but it's so good. He just puts him in every corner, every corner of the ring, and it doesn't seem to be like anything that anyone can do about it. You know what I mean? There's. Uh, I mean, uh, I'll be honest. As I think George Grove mentioned that as well. He just doesn't give a time to think. You know, he's right upon you. This. I mean. You, you could land, I don't really know, a three, four punch combination. It could be your best punches. He just keeps coming. You know, it, it might, it, it, it looks like he, it maybe wastes a punch or two at the same time as, but. You see, when he's throwing combos, though, he's not, he's not planting every punch. He's yeah, that, that's just, the thing. That's that the thing. Finding that's a bit a, of range. Yeah, it's, it's like he's, he's working himself into range sometimes. I've seen it working with Gonzalez sometimes. He's not throwing leather, you know, at, uh, uh, yeah, moving he, he, around and yeah exactly. I he's just kind of like seeing how you maybe react to an uppercut, to a left hook, to a right hand to the body. It's not like a, it's not like a, a you know, a, a heavy duty blow. But they still he, hurt. That's the thing. It, yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. You know, it might, it might hurt, but at the same time as well as what we're saying is, you maybe throw a left uppercut, it will miss completely. But I think he's maybe looking for that left uppercut to see, to see, see how maybe Murray is going to defend it. You see how he may, may like work on it. Yeah, he's exactly, you know. Yeah. Like. Exactly, I, th- yeah. I, think that's, I think that's how he's maybe working off it. He's maybe throw a right hand at the body, then maybe a left uppercut, he says, right, okay. He's maybe going to see, right, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to throw a left hook, so he's, he's going to block that shot, I'm going to come, come in with a straight right hand, and then he can maybe land that straight right hand, right, okay, so I'm, I'm going to work on that in the future. So he's, he's going to maybe, then, then he's going to maybe fake the right hand, and then come in with the left uppercut. You know, so Murray's maybe second guessing himself at, at, at all times. I really don't know what it is, but people just really just, you know, people just say that Golovkin is a banger. It's not, it's not the case. Golovkin no, can nullify your job. He can nullify your job. He can take you at distance. He can move you into distance and he can walk you down without you've known it. And the pressure that he puts on you, Gareth, is unbelievable. How, you know, any day as well as you fight on the back foot, you're using more cardiovascular endurance. To fight on yeah. the back foot, you know, you, you know, you fight the front foot, no problem. Fight the back foot, totally different ball game. 
say, I don't think he's likely to go up in weight. I don't think he's got the, no. the physique for it. He's small. He's small for middleweight. He's, I'd say he's more likely to go down than up. Oh, I was going to ask actually as well. Is I think we're talking about it on the, on our forum, uh, boxsam dot com actually. Is um, okay. He made what was it? One. He was one sixty three. Oh, it's maybe back me up here, mate. I think it was one sixty three. Maybe three days before the weigh in. Some people were mentioning as, "All oh, right, he would make one fifty four, no problem." Yeah, you, you need to remember here is uh, Canelo. You know, he is a big light middleweight. He was struggling to make 154 for... Well, exactly. I mean, he had to make 152 for, for, for Floyd. I think you'd be taking a lot out of Canelo. Sorry, a lot out of Golovkin to make 154. I, I think Golovkin's like your typical Marvin Hagler. He's stuck to that one white, I think. You know, if he moves up or moves down... Giving away I, a lot. I think, it, yeah, he's going he's gonna to lose something. You know, Marvin Hagler was best where he was and he's stuck there. He rehydrates a lot, though. He uh, For Rubio, he was 173, I think, or 175. In the ring. Yeah. Saying that, he can't move anyways, can he? Spencer Fearon says that uh, De Gale will kill him because he's a sucker for uppercuts. I was, but I mentioned there, actually. I think he might be open to uppercuts. Um, I... I can see his point because even though when you're on a shot on, on Golovkin, you know, it's usually the, the one shot that I'd seen tonight from Murray was, was the right hand over the top. You know, yeah. there wasn't, there wasn't many uppercuts coming in. You know, I can see what Spencer Fearon's saying there is there's not really much head movement, but in the day as well as there wasn't any uppercuts coming in and whatever shots that Murray was landing as the fact of the matter was he was not being buzzed. You know, he smelled it. He ate it up. You know, you know, people were were voting that the fact is that Curtis Stevens got a like great it. left hook. You know, Curtis Stevens got a great left hook. He landed it a few times in Golovkin. Golovkin smelled them, kept coming. You know, that, it didn't look like fake smiles either, did they? Exactly, he's an evil bastard. Mate. He's an evil bastard. He, he rolls with the punches really well as well. I mean, you 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 see any punch he takes, he's constantly. He does a little a flick away from it. He will turn his head with it. He will sort of flex his body to roll with it to take it better. So, I mean, obviously he's got a fantastic chin, but he seems to think, well, I'm going to take this punch, but if I, you know, roll a couple of inches with it, it's not going to hurt as much. So he, he almost thinks that, you know, he doesn't need that defense. His defense is to take it and then blast you away with a bigger punch. Gareth, just before we let you go, mate, give me your thoughts or your scorecard on Paul Smith against Arthur Abraham. I had Smith win in the first, maybe with the first round, that was about it. Like, he, he, like similar to Murray, he fought in burst, couple, like he was trying, but it, the work wasn't effective enough, I didn't think. I'll give it mostly to Abraham. I said, I've, it's maybe, maybe eight, 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 four, nine, 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 three, something like that. I don't I mean, know. That, and that's being generous. I mean, I, I don't know if it was last week or the, or the week before, but but I, th- I I did say that I felt that maybe Paul Smith, you know, you know, there's there's a time in our lives, you know, it doesn't really matter what level of sport that you play, you maybe play sport, maybe at an amateur level, whatever it is, there comes a time in your life where you have a great game or a great fight or a great individual moment in your life. I think Paul Smith's moment was against Abraham in that first fight. Tonight it wasn't there, you know. I think I you think had like, he, he, he was up his level, and and Abraham was below his level. I think on the last fight. Yeah, and then he just know, sort of evened out. You know, I, I, I think he's been saying before is you know I think uh, Yuli Wagner's been saying cut in the past that Abraham hasn't been trained to his effective levels. He's been sometimes he's been kind of lackadaisical, so to speak. I mean, he's, he's he has fought below his level. If you look, yeah. if you look at like say, some of the guys he's fought, like uh, Isaac Ekpo, for instance, when he's fighting these guys that he doesn't feel they much of a threat, he doesn't perform. But if you look at his best performance before tonight, it was the Stieglitz fight when he knew that a loss would probably be the end of his career, and he came out and outboxed Stieglitz for the majority of the fight. So you, you see, though, think, technically he's shit. He looks terrible, yeah, yeah. but he just he's just a hard bastard. He's, he's nails. He's nails. He's built like an ox, isn't he? As well, right. he's strong. He takes a shot. He he doesn't flinch. Basically, he just keeps coming and he's shit. But he, he's got strength, isn't he? As well, and he hits hard. Body 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 shots are, are, are his kryptonite. In all honesty, but at the same time, when he landed against Smith tonight, when he landed flush, Smith knew, 
and that is that's the difference is 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 the, is the fact is when I mean, Smith landed his best bingo punch, Abraham didn't I flinch. Didn't he finish. kept coming. He kept coming. And I tell you what, one thing is is when when Abraham did didn't load, he was getting body shots. But when he pierced his guard, I did think that. Holland, for instance, and Jim Watt did a disservice to him at the same time. Well, I think he did a disservice to both fighters when they threw their punches because Abraham was landing at times that they didn't call Smith on, on, on you know, at the same time as, but I really did think as Smith's best chance was left out of the body, which he kind of negated at the same time as well as that third round. I don't know <coughs> what the hell Abraham was doing. When he hurt Smith in that third round, I felt Smith was ready to go, and he somehow reason just coasted for the last 30, 20 seconds of that round. I just don't think that. you can add on. Full round, that's it. Say again, mate. And then he, co- he takes the rest of the round off. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if he's just not, he hasn't got the stamina. I mean, obviously he's carrying that extra muscle. Middleweight, I think he was a far, far superior fighter at middleweight. You know, he was, he was basically starching people on, on gurneys, basically. He was an animal. He was, he was, he was an animal. Just, though, you know, it's amazing that people say that those, you know, two, three, four, six pounds doesn't make a difference. Eight pounds for Arthur Abraham is obviously well, made look, a big difference. Well, look at my hand now. He's got a chin of iron. <laughs> <laughs> those, um, those, those German fighters, you know, Huck. Or German based, Huck, Sturm and Abraham, they all fight in similar ways, you know, they yeah. don't do much for rounds, they, in the last 30 seconds they'll fire away and they, they all fight similar, they just take rounds off and it just, just seems to be their way of doing things. Uh, they get it though, don't they? They get the decisions over there, like, but, uh, I don't know, I, I quite like it, I quite like the way they do it, to be honest. It's, it's, it's clever. Yeah, as I say, I mean, I, I, you know, Germany is one of my most favourite countries. I've been there many times, and as I say, I hope to go to. Hopefully, I'm begging Sterling to make the fight. Um, Abraham against Sturm. Gareth, give me your thoughts on that fight. Finally, before we end the show, give me your thoughts. If Abraham Sturm happens, who who have you got in that fight? I just think Sturm. I don't know. I like Sturm. I just think he's a bit neater, a bit tidier. I just think he'll he'll do him on points. There we go. Cheers for that, Gareth. Alright, cheers, buds. All the best, mate. Cheers. Cheers, Gareth. Cut no more collars. No, I think they've all been cobbled now. No, been cobbled. Oh, great. Good stuff. Just let the callers know as tomorrow we're going to be discussing the most recent news, Twitter questions, the Bell of the Week segment, and obviously we're going to be looking forward to Carol Frampton's IBF Super Bantamweight title defence against Chris Avalos. Gonna, other... I just mentioned we're going to also talk about the huge announcement that has recently revealed Audley Harrison is returning this year. <laughs> returning this year. <laughs> just just to let the listeners know is, listen, don't, don't get above yourselves. We've got 11 weeks to the, the main fight. We're going to have a live show next Thursday. The date of that show is as follows. It is going to be the 26th of February. We're going to go live at 8pm. Any comments you want to say about Manny Pacquiao, Mayweather being made for May 2nd for the WBO, I, sorry, WBO, WBC, WBA, welterweight titles of the world, and it's going to be for the true, the true pound for pound championship of the world, the lineal light, sorry, lineal welterweight ch- uh, championship of the world. You know, basically this is going to be the Hagler, sorry, it's going to be the Fraser Alley of our time. Um, hopefully you're going, to, you're going to enjoy it. The fight itself, you know, when it was announced, I'm not, I was going to, I'm not really that pumped for it. I'm, ha- I'm happy that it's happening. It's five years too late, guys, in all honesty. You know, Mayweather's going to win the fight. We're going to discuss it in great detail on Thursday. See you tomorrow at 8pm and live as usual. All the best. This is Andy Patterson. I've had Kurt Ward, Alex Morris, Donny Baseball on the call. All the thanks to the callers. Paul McAllister, Rob Palmer, eh, Gareth and John. If I miss your names out, all the best. See you tomorrow, 8pm live. All the best.